Have you ever wondered what makes an electric vehicle different than its gas-powered counterparts? How are they constructed? What goes into them? Well, this video will dive into those details. My name is Captain Durham and welcome to another video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about lithium-ion batteries and electric vehicles, start now by subscribing and click the bell so you don't miss anything in the future. So for the last 10 years or so, when one of the traditional OEMs, Ford, GM, Stellantis, when they would make an electric vehicle, they would take an existing combustion engine vehicle, they would strip the engine out, the transmission, everything that made it a, a traditional vehicle, and they would jam a battery in wherever they could, as well as the electric motors to make this an electrified version of the vehicle. Now, the traditional OEMs are starting to design vehicles from the ground up. And this is the way Tesla has always been doing it. But everybody at this point, they're starting with this universal skateboard design, where the bottom of the vehicle is the battery. We've now got another classification of vehicle construction. Going back to Fire Academy days, we had unibody construction, body on frame construction. Now this electric vehicle skateboard design is a third construction type. Realistically, there's three design strategies when you start looking at battery pack design. You have a semi-structural pack. The pack bolts up from underneath of the vehicle and it's meant to share the load with the body structure of the vehicle. When you start looking at things like side impact, front rear impact, the structural packs, those take a lot more of the load in those types of situations, or you've got the example of the Tesla Model Y, where the battery pack is actually the entire center of the vehicle. You remove the battery pack in that vehicle and there's nothing left. Non-structural packs are vehicles that still have a body on frame design, where the battery pack doesn't really need to take any of the load. It actually fits between the frame rails on the vehicle. An example of this would be like the newest Ford Lightning, or you start getting the heavy truck, where you still have very large frame rails and they can put those battery packs anywhere within the vehicle. Now these battery packs, again, they're meant to be structural. They're required to take side pull impact, for example, front rear impact. There's a lot of design that goes into these packs, underside impact, stone impact. Uh, they wanna make sure that whatever happens to the vehicle, you still have energy being dissipated in a crash situation. It still has to have that crumple zone, it has to absorb energy, protect the occupants, but also protect the batteries. Now this changes the overall structure of the vehicle because now the battery box itself, the thing in the bottom of the vehicle holding all the batteries, all the weight is very heavy. You're talking 1,000, 1,500 pounds. The new electric Hummer, that's a 2,500 pound battery pack. It's also a 9,000 pound vehicle, so very heavy, very low center of gravity. Now I'd expect in some type of crash situation or rollover accident that these vehicles, because the center of gravity is so low, that they're gonna land four wheels down. But as we know in the fire service, crazy things happen. People like to park vehicles in different ways, inappropriate ways, and that just may not happen. Now what are these packs made out of? Primarily on the market today, you see steel and aluminum packs. You have a lot of pieces put together, they're spot welded, and there's a lot of sealant that goes into those pieces. Uh, they have a very difficult time right now sealing the battery packs because there's so many pieces. The future of battery technology is composite. Now you have two parts. You have a tray and a cover. It makes it very easy to seal the pack, and there's far fewer pieces involved in putting this pack together. The battery box itself is also watertight and fireproof. They don't want water getting into the inside of the box because that could cause the batteries to fail. They don't want fire getting in the box or out of the box for obvious reasons. Now if you really want to see how electric vehicles are designed, how they're built, I really recommend you check out my friends over at Monroe Live. They do full electric vehicle teardowns, analysis of these vehicles, a lot of good content over there. There'll be a link in the description below. Hopefully that answers some questions about how an electric vehicle is constructed, specifically the battery box structure for an electric vehicle. In a future video, I'll talk about what's inside an electric vehicle's battery box.